How you doing folks? Well, um, I'm working on a nice little project in the garage today, one which I haven't really been filming much progress on, but I've been kind of um, tipping away on in the background. And the reason I haven't been filming the progress is simply because of the fact that up until now, these type of videos don't really get that many that much attention, and I decided that what I'd do is I'd just do it for my own uh, enjoyment and show you the end result, or at least bring you in close to the end. So uh, let's have a look. My garage looks like a bomb hit it at the moment, and um, that's uh, because of, well, between one thing and another, we're just using it for storage at the moment, so it's kind of a little bit of an inconvenience, but I still have a little bit of space on the workbench. My um, Felgate radio is in the background there waiting to get some attention, but this is a Briggs & Stratton 60102, built in 1976, and what I did was I bought it and completely stripped it, and uh, replaced all the seals and gaskets, inspected everything, honed the cylinders, relapped the valves and put it all back together again. I was able to pick up new decals, so uh, these are all new and I cleaned the carburetor in an ultrasonic bath. Now the carburetor when I got this engine was actually painted, I decided not to paint it. Um, there's still a little bit of tidying needs to be done, like I need to repaint that, whatever happened it just the paint reacted with it. The other thing as well too is I went to start it and the pull cord came off in my hand so <laughs> I need to tie a better knot than that which was kind of frustrating because I was nearly at the point of starting it. I have the uh, the jet reinstalled with new seals, I have the um, choke mechanism lubricated properly, uh, it's filled with 20W50 engine oil and what I now need to do is I need to take the uh, fan shroud off, attach the governor and uh, the, the, the governor uh, linkage is not connected yet. I have a new spring for that. And what I need to do too is I need to reinstall my air filter assembly. And uh, the reason I need to reinstall my air filter assembly is because you cannot adjust the uh, fueling on one of these engines with the air filter assembly not installed because having it installed will affect the fueling. So let's, uh, let's get that, fa um, that fan shroud removed and get the governor hooked up and repair that uh, pull cord so we can actually try and get it started. I'm not overly happy about the cramped working conditions I have to deal with here, but such is life. At least I actually have a garage, so it's something. So what we'll do is just three bolts holding on the uh, fan shroud. So take them off, just 716 bolts. Everything is imperial on this. So take that off. I'm not entirely sure how the governor actually connects on this, so I'll have to try and figure that out as well. What I love about this engine is it's really lightweight and um, compact, easy to move around. It can't be more than 10 kilos. Uh, the Lister engine, as I say, as I mentioned in previous videos, it's like a an anvil with a flywheel on it. You, you, you can't move the thing very easily at all. That's why I had to build a cart on wheels. What I might do actually for display purposes is, is put this engine on the same cart uh, further down. Or maybe make a little stand for it or something like that. But what I what I want to do eventually with this is I want to build a, um, a VW inspired mini bike, which basically uses two uh, beetle wings and the headlight at the front, the tail light at the back. You kind of join the two wings and you use a mini bike frame and a little engine like this. So I need to get a little centrifugal clutch for it. It's a, it's a long term project so don't be expecting videos on that anytime soon. Let's put that, that aside now. Let me see here what's going on. That's our flap for the governor and there is a tab at the very top. So what we need to do is I'll bring you over here and you can have a look and see what we're dealing with. So there's our flap, and there is just a tab at the top, and there's several holes down the bottom which are numbered. I'm going to put it in the middle. Uh, I think that's actually where it was before. So there's a rod that comes along over from down there over to the throttle, and then the spring goes onto this. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how, how it operates, so I need to figure that out. So. Let's have a look at the rod, the, the rod linkage, and see. It might actually have to go on the top. Maybe those, I think, actually those uh, holes are for the spring or something like that. We'll we'll see anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and just hook the uh, rod there, and then it has to go into 
there's a hole on the top of the throttle linkage here which that then needs to go into it but um, how exactly that's supposed to maybe we have to hook the uh, hook it there first of all I don't know how he's supposed to connect it there yeah, if, it, if it was easy everybody would be doing it I know that this end is right and this end has to go at the top because if it went down in one of the holes anywhere but okay right so no because the spring has to go from here to here and I suppose but if that moves too far over there what will end up happening is it cuts the engine off you can see there's a little there's a little metal tab, a little tab there, and the wire goes onto it down here, which actually cuts off the um, cuts off the ignition. So when you want to shut the engine down, you just push that down there. So saying shutting this engine down seems like a little bit <laughs> of a kind of a like I'm talking about a much bigger engine. I suppose it's just the terminology I'm used to from work. I can't imagine having to bend this. No, I think Dr. Google is in order here. Let's have a look. Okay, so it was going right. It was really just a case of bending it um, to get it into the right position. So now, we just need to... There's only a little bit of wire, really, you know what I mean? So, as a uh, airflow increases from the fan, which will be coming up here, it pushes, pushes that over, over there and pulls the governor down, and then when it decreases, it comes up like this. And then this, uh, this lad here needs to go over to the spring. So let's uh, let's get our spring out and connect that. Okay, I think just looking at some of the pictures I I saw on the internet, I have it right now. But it's kind of hard to tell in a lot of cases. So let's uh, I'll stick to, I'll stick the light on on my camera here, and you can actually see what we're doing. It doesn't help the fact that the light in my garage is acting to go. Um so yeah, so there's the spring going on to this. Now if you push that all the way over to there it actually will kill the engine because that's the the kill point, the little car copper contact there which grounds off on this. Um so obviously you don't want that to happen. But I suppose the thing is is that would only happen if it was right the way down at idle and then it would, the governor would pick it back up again unless you held it there. I don't know. Anyway we'll we'll have a go at it, we'll we'll start it. Let's get the pull cord um Pull cord sorted out next. I've got a, I'm getting a pain in my face with this, to be honest with you, because I've had to do it twice now. So there's the uh, pull cord. Obviously, I didn't actually put it in and put the thing in like that. It goes horizontal, but um, when the wire broke it or the cord broke, I just kind of stuffed it back in there just to keep it safe. So we need to try and pull the cord back out through there, give it a couple of twists to tension it, and tie a knot in that. It's not going to bloody break. Okay, so I've done my bit faffing about to try and get the uh, get the wire or the I keep calling it a wire the cord through. So uh, it is true now. So next thing, what I need to do is just burn the end of it, uh, just to stop it from. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine, and uh, that'll stop it from fraying. Theoretically, poke this through here. You know, I wouldn't use this as an instructional video on how to do this simply because of the fact that I'm after making a complete bags of it twice. So <laughs> maybe just watch, take it as this is the way not to do it. So what I do is, I think what I might do is just tie a, a cautionary knot in that, just so that if it does get away from me. It's not going to recoil again because you'd get a pain in your face trying to undo that. So anyway, that's uh, that should be all right for the moment. Um, I did actually find on Google how to tie a cord, uh, a, a pull cord knot. Um, so there is uh, various different methods, and that's the method I'll go. I'll go for. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tie a knot just after the pull cord as well, so that if it does if it does come loose in there, I'm just going to do a quick loop knot there, and that should hopefully be kind of belt and braces type thing. At least that's the theory anyway. So 
I'm going to try and put it close enough to the top so we don't want the, co the cord fla flailing around because obviously it's not going to go fur past that knot but I think that should do the job nicely so let's let that off now ah, it's not sitting right up against it but you know what that'll be okay all right so now let's refit the uh, refit the fan shrouds. The engine back over here. This one I prepared earlier. The light above my head is going on and off. The fluorescent tube is on its way out, so I haven't gotten the chance to go up and pick up a new fluorescent tube for it. But I will at some stage. Something on a long list of things to do. Okay. So that's, so that's turning over nicely there now. So that's, uh, that's that job done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the air, the air cleaner assembly on. Just screw that down there. And it is, that is now a complete engine, which I'm delighted about. This is the first time this engine has been completely back together since I got it. As I said, a little bit of tidying up to do here and there, but. I'm really happy. I think it's a really nice little engine. I love, I love this thing. It's, it's fantastic. And when you hear it running, you'll see it's all worthwhile. So let's bring it outside and give it a, try and give it a start and see if we can get it adjusted. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do before I nip up the spark plug is I'm going to put a little bit of petrol into the cylinder. I've learned a lot from watching Musty One videos. So uh, if you don't uh, follow him, you really need, to, especially if you're watching this video, you definitely the type of thing you'd be interested in. So let's uh, pop the spark plug out. A little uh, container with a tiny bit of petrol in it, because uh, I don't have the little drippers he always seems to have. Uh, pour petrol all over the place, that's answered that right Okay, uh, and put this back in. We set the engine on fire now, ain't it? I suppose that's one of the reasons I'm doing it outside. Now, nip that up. H2 lead back on. And hopefully, it kicks off. Well, it's fired. I would have liked it for it to have kept running, but okay. Turn off the choke and see what happens. Go park choke. It wants to do it, it really does. Oh god. Obviously it just starts a lot easier than this. Baseline setting, so half one, half two, right. Now, half choke. Oh, it's definitely a lot closer to the mark this time. Full choke. Okay, no choke. wants to do it. Right, another half on the mixture screw. We go half on the choke again. <sighs> I need to find out what's going on with this. Obviously it should start a lot easier. OK, 
Okay, I think I might have just found a problem. Bring you around here and you can have a look. There's vapour coming out around the uh, around the cab, so I need to take that off and put a bit of sealant on it or something like that. That's a new gasket, so it shouldn't be obviously doing that. But uh, it is all the same. So let's uh, let's get the fuel tank and carb off, and we'll have a look and see if we can fix that. In theory, you don't need to take the fuel tank off before you take the carb off, but it definitely makes it a lot easier. So I'll take that off. Put that screw out there. And you never get the uh, you never get the fueling right if you have an intake leak. Okay. So I'll have the carb off, I'll just make sure that the, the pickup isn't blocked as well. So, where is my flathead screwdriver gone? There it is, it fell off. One of the screws is quite awkward to get out for the carb, and the other one is easy. So I'll take the one out that's awkward first. So you're not supporting the weight of the carb rather while you're removing it. So I'll take that out. And I'll take that out. Obviously being aware that the uh, linkage is still attached to it. So, take it out, put it the rest of the way by hand. It's remarkable actually just in the space of time it's been running how warm the exhaust has gotten. Okay, you can actually see where the gasket was. Oh right, hang on a second. <laughs> The gasket obviously dropped off. It's actually stuck there, but it's, it's my own silly fault. All right, that's that's good because we found our culprit. Hopefully, well, it can't not be that really. So, engine will never run right with it like that. So let's. Uh, I mean, you have to be careful not to kind of stretch the governor's spring too much. But adjust it again afterwards if you need to. So we'll get the bottom screw in first. In this instance the reason I'm putting the bottom screw in first is because it's just keeping the, the gasket in place. the gasket sitting properly. I'm not going to use any sealant on it, I don't need to, it's obviously just a, it wasn't installed properly in the first instance, so that's great. So I'll get that screw in there as well now. Flat effect. Yep. You see, the thing is, is that this engine relies on um, vacuum to uh, pull the fuel from the tank. There's no float bowl in this carburetor. This literally, that's your pickup there, and it just goes straight up into the carb, and away you go. So that's uh, definitely going to affect things. But let's uh, get our screws for our well, the fuel tank. The screws are there still, so let's uh, get the fuel tank reinstalled. do is we'll set everything up properly. Now that we've actually found a problem, we'll go back to basics, set everything up the way it's supposed to be, and see if we can get it running then. So, those screws are in, they're tight, and the governor is connected. I will leave the uh, leave the wire off, the ignition cut for the moment, but I'm going to put the air filter assembly back on just to uh, make sure that we can get it adjusted correctly. Alright. 
Now, back to our baseline setting on the uh, mixer screw, which is in here. So we'll go wind it all the way back in and we'll just go two turns out. So half, one, half, two. All right. So now let's see how we get on. Um, I will actually uh, nip up that spark plug as well. It's done. And we'll get you guys moved back so you can see what we have. Right. So I'm cautiously optimistic this time. Probably shouldn't be, but I am also. Give it a little choke. Take the head off, have a look. I think that's what we're going to do next. Okay, definitely do have a problem. It's locked up. I wonder if that hydro locked or what? Let's see what's going on. Yeah. Shite. Okay. Right, let's get it back into the garage and have a look. Alright, let's pull the head off. I can see what's after happening. It's obviously something gone wrong. I'm disappointed at this now, to be honest with you. I mean, it's pretty obvious I did something wrong, but... What exactly, I don't know. Some people would probably say I touched it in the first instance because it actually wasn't that bad inside when I took it, up, took it apart. It was very grubby outside, but inside it was actually very clean. Now, for those of you who say you can't, you're not supposed to hone cool bore engines, I literally gave it the lightest rub with the honing tool. I mean, I didn't go mad on it, so. Okay, so it's turning but reluctantly, so let's get the head off and find out what's going on. There is oil in it, I mean I checked the oil before we even started the process. Yeah. Remove head bolts in kind of diagonal patterns as well as install them that way because they the head can warp just as easily when you're removing them as you can when you're installing them. Now there are four four bolts in this that are longer than the rest. So those four bolts are, best of my knowledge, the ones around the valves. I'm hoping now when I take the head off that the engine rotates freely. Whatever. I think we're going to be opening the crankcase, folks. Just, there's no nothing untoward in the top end. I'll get you set up here so you can have a look and see here for yourselves. So as I turn it, 
it's stopping there. And it turns, rotates around. And either direction, it doesn't want to move past that point. So. Can't imagine what might have caused that. Um, but yeah, I think splitting the crankcase is going to be the only option for us here, unfortunately. I mean, I'm going to leave as much of it together as I can. I'll just open the side cover of it and have a look and see what's going on there. So, anyway, the only other thing I can think of is maybe the valve, the inlet valve is stuck. Maybe it was stuck open and now it's stuck closed. Although, the inlet valve shouldn't be open in any... Oh, there you go, see it? Now it's turning freely. Something's after scoring the light out of the bore. Wonder what that could have been. And have a look over this side now, you'll see it. Just there. Now it's more like raised metal rather than it's like something got in there when I uh... Uh, right okay I think I'm going to be stripping this engine again you know that no time left to present to make a start on it I suppose I'll uh, disconnect everything something get in the inlet, did something it's stuck in the crankcase, I don't know, I don't know what's after causing this, but damage has been caused somehow. Alright, that's that, and then that's the carb off. Rod, take the exhaust off next. May as well get it out of our way, they come off quite easily on these engines. tool to remove the flywheel. At least the, the positive out of all of this is I've actually got a lot of the work done anyway, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the, there's, there's obviously problems, but the likes of the clutch mechanism is done, the bits are all painted, so, you know, it's a bit of a polished turd at this point in time, but your look. Um, I'm going to need to drain the oil as well, so what I might do is I might sieve it and have a look and see if anything comes out, uh, because it's entirely possible that something, maybe contamination got in with the oil or something like that. As I said to you, I really uh, don't know what actually happened here, like what went wrong. But uh, 
Our starting problem was most certainly uh, low compression. Kind of wish I'd left it alone now, I know that. That was fresh oil when I put it in. No, I'm not feeling any kind of grittiness or anything like that in it. But hopefully now whatever caused the problem with the cylinder hasn't wrecked the main bearing as well or anything else for that matter. I mean when I lapped the valves I was very very careful to make sure I washed all of the valve lapping compound out of it. That's the only thing I'm wondering is did maybe a clump of it stay hidden somewhere and make its way in. That's the only thing I can think of at this point in time. But let's get the side cover off the crankcase. It's like a grittiness in the bottom of the crankcase. I mean, I don't know what the hell that is. It's like, I don't know what is after happening. Either way, it's after making shit of the engine. So what I need to do is I need to flush it out. I need to polish up the cylinder walls as best I can. Check the bearings. Try and get it all back together and see if it works then. Ah, I'm annoyed about this now to be honest, I really am. It's disappointing. The grittiness could be caused by something breaking up rather than it actually being there from something I did, but well. You know, I mean, it's most definitely something I did, but like, just pour the rest of that oil out. So now it's on the compression stroke, so now the um, camshaft is free to come out, and let's take that out, and inspect it, clean it. And so that one there is the exhaust valve uh, follower. So. Lucky enough it hasn't seen it doesn't seem to have sustained any major damage. It's as well I didn't get this engine to start for any length of time because it would have wrecked itself. I mean properly I'd say this engine would have been beyond repair if I'd uh, managed to uh, run it for any length of time. So the exhaust valve follower is going to go in the exhaust itself so I know it's the uh, correct follower and then the inlet one is going in the carburetor well with the carburetor anyway so at least we know where we're what we're dealing with next thing to do is to remove the crank and piston okay just about to get the uh, big end bearing separated out here there's the oil slinger he's slightly scored but salvageable Big end bearing. Here we go. So what is after happening? Is there some sort of grit or something inside in the uh, rings on the piston? No wonder it's after making a sh making shit of itself. So this rings off now. You can see in there. It's like. All right, so at least we have the, have the engine apart now anyway, so let's uh, wipe, out the, wipe out the bore and see how we're, how we're looking and how much damage it has sustained. Metal fragments all over it. There's definitely a bit of gouging in that uh, cylinder. I think we might just get away with it though, I think uh, Spray it with some electrical contact cleaner here now and see how. I wonder. I wonder was it valve lapping compound or was it? I I there were some parts on the engine I blasted to clean them, but I'm generally very careful about cleaning that sort of stuff off after the fact. Right. So, that's the worst of it. 
So what we do is we get a little bit of um, very very light emery and just try and rub that down and see if we can remove that heavy uh, heavy kind of raised metal there and then we'll hone it and see if we uh, see how we're looking down. I'm going to remove the crankshaft first though because that should just pull out at this stage. Okay let's uh, let's give it a light hone and see how we get on. It's uh, it's definitely not going to go away completely but if you get it get it manageable. Uh, sprayed a bit of light oil on the uh, honing tool. Ow. Okay, so yeah, I definitely did hurt my hand. Um, <laughs> the hits just keep on coming with this. Ah uh, yeah, right. Okay, let's uh, let's get the. Um, we need to do a bit more honing because uh, there's still some vertical scoring in there, which I, I want to try and get rid of as best I can. You can definitely feel there is um, there's a wear groove in the uh, in the cylinder wall there, but you know, I mean, yeah, we're going to lose a bit of compression, but unfortunately, you can't can't exactly do anything about that at this point. This time I'm going to keep my hands away from the bloody honing tool. Oh. That's a fairly serious gouge in there. We're definitely going to lose compression there. So... I need to rethink my options here anyway. Suffice it to say I'm after making complete shit of this engine and I'm really annoyed to be honest with you. So um, not only that I'm after hurting my hand. So I'm going to call it there for today lads. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will pick this up again soon. I'm not going to let it beat me.